Hello and happy Mother's Day, friends. As always, I pray this is a blessed day for you, especially for you ladies out there. Uh, whether you are a mother or just a mother figure, whether you're a wannabe mother, or you just simply, like I, have a mother, happy Mother's Day to you. Uh, of course, with today being Mother's Day, that's what we're going to talk about. That's not an excuse for you men to check out. Uh, hopefully the, the Lord has something in store for us all to learn here today. And so I pray that this, again, blesses you. I pray that I only say what the Lord would have me to say. So, first off, you know, I'm not a mother, of course. <laughs> I have one, and she may not have been the, the best mother in the world. And she may not win any prizes for her motherhood. Uh, even with all the mistakes she made, or that I may think that she made, uh, she still deserves to be respected, honored, and loved, and forgiven. Because I know that she did what she thought was right in the moment. And so I still love her. I will see her later today for her Mother's Day, of course. And uh, I will share that love with her. And so first off, you know, something to come to my mind today is the expectation that women have. I mean, we always expect them to be good mothers, all that good stuff, you know, especially today here being on Mother's Day. But think about, you know, and I can only speak to this as far as what I've seen, heard, read, whatever. Again, I'm not a female. I don't know what it's like to be a female. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> but I can't help but know and see the expectations on women, even from an early age. You know, what do little girls play with? What do they do? They dream of one day having a family. They dream of one day being married. And I'm sure in that dream, they picture everything being perfect. Having the perfect husband, having the perfect kids, the perfect little home, you know, all that good stuff. And so the expectations for them, whether they're self-imposed or not, begin at a very, very early age. And when you think about those dreams as a little young lady, young child, how many of those dreams came true? And what happens when they don't come true? I mean, I can't help but think about those women that may not even be married yet. Maybe they're in their mid-twenties. You know, maybe they're in their mid-forties and haven't gotten married yet. And having to deal with all those questions. You know, well, when are you going to get married? And then once you get married, well, when are you going to have children? And then once you have children, when are you going to kick them out? No, just kidding. And all of these expectations are on you from the beginning. And I know as men, you know, we have pressures as well. But I don't believe they're anything like you women. And that's why, another reason I'm thankful, I'm not a lady. I know there's many women that are struggling right now with having children and not able to. I know there are many women that have lost children. And my wife and I ourselves, my wife lost three children's miscarriage early on. And I know that there are women that have lost children way too early. And for all of these, my heart goes out to you because I know that today includes a painful experience for you. You know, I watched my wife for many years have to work with, have to have friends, have to have family that had children and she couldn't. And I know that caused pain and hurt. And I know for many of you out there today, you're hurting. And my heart, my prayers go out to you. Today's not always a perfect day 
for many of us, just like for motherhood. Motherhood's not always a, a perfect experience either. One thing I always tried to do for Allison, knowing that you know she couldn't have children or that we didn't have children, is seek out how God had still blessed us. You know, she worked in the schools. She's kept children throughout the years. We worked with youth for many years. And a lot of these things, I think that if we had our own children, we probably wouldn't have been able to affect these other kids positively. I mean, I remind her now that, you know, she had the opportunity or has the opportunity to provide a safe place, a loving place for children. You know, not every child has a good mother. Not every child has a good home. And so if you have not yet had children or you're struggling to have children, then I pray that you too seek out how you may be a mother figure or a loving person in another child's life. Whether it be through babysitting, whether it be through school, church activities, or maybe fostering or adopting a child out there that needs a loving mother. I pray that you seek out God's wisdom in that. And that if you really feel him leading you in that direction, then you move in that direction. And again, I pray that just being a loving example to some child out there, you have the opportunity to be a mother still. So I pray that you're blessed by that word. And then for many of us, you know, along with the expectations of motherhood, many of us didn't have good mothers. You know, a lot of mothers, you know, they, they end up having children too early or unplanned. And we can throw stones and all of that at them for that. That's not what I'm here to do. I recognize that there are many mothers out there that we have had that were not ready to be mothers, but yet the Lord gave us to them for whatever reason and His grand plan. And so not everyone has had a good mother. And you think about a young teenage woman about to have a, a child, and the addictions and stuff she may have already been into or not even just a teenage woman just maybe a, an unmarried woman or whatever who was not ready for a child but yet for whatever reason had one and was still wrestling with the fleshly desires and then they had this child and it's easy for us to sit here and say, you know, that when you have a child, those selfish desires should go away. I agree with that 100%. But I also know the struggle of the flesh, the struggle of addiction, it grabs hold of some of them and they just cannot snap out of the selfishness. And so they weren't great mothers. And so it's hard, you know, for us as being their children to sometimes forgive, love, honor, respect them, you know, still today. But I'm here to encourage you. Number one, I'm sure there's still probably some good that you can find in that situation. I'm sure that you've learned something from that situation that is positive in your life today. And if so, I pray that you honor that mother for that still. And then if you're wrestling with bitterness or pain, I pray that you find forgiveness for your mother. God has called us or commanded us to forgive. There's no out in that. Bad mother, good mother, whatever. We're commanded to forgive. And then he also commands us to love, respect, and honor. And as difficult as that is, it is still what we have to do. 
We forgive because we've been forgiven. We love because we've been loved. And we honor because God tells us to honor. And then thankfully, most of us out there have had good mothers. And those are the type of women that would have given their lives for us. They did lay down their selfish desires and sacrifice so much for their children. You know, maybe it's careers, maybe it's freedom. And again, I've seen it from being teenage mothers and unplanned pregnancies to older women in their motherhood that have been good mothers. And God has blessed their children with good mothers. And of course, our scripture today is going to come from Proverbs 31 because it describes a good mother. And we're just going to read the last four or five verses of it. Proverbs 31, verses 27 through 31. He says, She, the mother, the woman, looks well to the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. Many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceitful, and beauty is vain. But a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands, and let her works praise her in the gates. Now women, I don't know if your children are praising you as they should every day, but I pray that they do so today. And I can't help but have a little little smile with the, the husband's praise of the woman as well because I know as a man, <laughs> married man, I'm not always good at praising my wife as much as she should be either. But I do praise and honor her in my heart for sure. And I do try to, from time to time, remind her how good she is. And so I pray that you guys out there hear this today and that you praise your wife. I know that you mothers, you women, you ladies, again, whether you are a mother or just a mother figure, I pray that you are praised today. And for me personally, again, I love my mom. And I'm thankful that she did try to do her best in raising me. And I also have a mother-in-law that has really been an excellent mother figure to me in my life for the last 24 plus years. And I know her children. And I know that she did her best to raise them up as well. And she was indeed a godly, God-fearing woman that deserves to be praised. And so I pray that she is honored today by her children, by her in-law children as well, and by her grandchildren. But friends, I pray that no matter what your situation is today, as far as motherhood goes, ladies, I pray that you would be comforted. You know, if you're still waiting on children, that you would be comforted. If you've lost children, that you would be comforted. And that if you have children, you would be comforted and praised today because God still has another blessing out there for you. And he has told us to honor you today. And I pray that you're honored today and every day. And so go forth today and have a wonderful, happy and blessed Mother's Day, no matter what your situation is. Be blessed, friends.